Good morning, everybody. Today is Financial Friday. This is Pastor Nick. I am fired up about the Word of God, man. I just got done listening to my spiritual mom, man, and it was just an awesome, encouraging message. God is most careful with you. God is most careful with you. That's what she wanted me to tell you today. God is most careful with you. Hey, today is winning in the Word. Today is Financial Friday. Um, I told you guys we're going to talk about no wicked thing relative to our money today. You know, on Financial Friday, man, God has put in my heart, you know, we're going to have Financial Fridays where I encourage you, but Financial Friday is going to be about learning and about getting more wisdom and about really understanding how to win in the marketplace. Um, I mean, real lessons on winning in the marketplace, things that are going to make a difference that you do every day that's going to cause your, fi your finances increase. So I want to get started. Let me pray and get right in the word. Father, I thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for this word. I thank you, Father, for these people. I thank you for Financial Friday. I thank you, Lord. It is your will. It is your desire. And it is your purpose for us to prosper in all things. I thank you, Lord, as we receive your word today, that we grow in wisdom and understanding. And as that happens, Father, our prosperity in every area of our life grows. I thank you, Father, as we sow seeds today, that as we put our hands in a plow, everything we put our hands to, Father, I declare it shall, it will, it must prosper in the name of Jesus. Amen. Good morning, Cynthia. Good morning, Tarshila. Good morning, Pastor Bazaar. Good morning, Yulitsa. Good morning, Amanda. Good morning, Paula and Chip. Good morning, Lakeisha. Good morning, uh, Candace, good morning, Shanika, Tony and Haiti, good morning, Desiree, good morning, Frank, good morning, Dr. Patty, good morning, Karen, good morning, Keita, good morning, Miss Donzi, good morning, Madeline, good morning, Rita, good morning, Jerry, 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 good morning to you. Uh, let me get over here. Uh, man, we got a lot. Uh, good morning, Cousin Faye, Carmen, good morning, Deacon Daryl, good morning, Alma, good morning, Jennifer, good morning, Natasha, Veronica, everybody that's joining, good morning, good morning, good morning. Man, get your pad out, get your pencil, pen out. Man, God's got a word for us today. Uh, relative to our finances, I told you I was going to talk about no wicked thing. Um, on these financial Fridays, they're going to be more instructional moving forward relative to how and things we can apply where we're at today in God's word to have victory. Amen. So when I was hearing from God about this, this subject, no wicked thing, you know, strife, we talked a lot about strife being a wicked thing. Strife comes from conflict. Conflict and strife come from a lack of listening. Okay. The wicked thing that will hinder you advancing in your job, you advancing in your business, um, you advancing in your investments, you advancing and you and your wife being on one accord relative to what to do with your finances, uh, you advancing with you and God being on one accord about what your next step is, is strife and conflict. So here's what God wanted me to talk about today. You know, in the book of Proverbs, chapter 18 and verse 13, Proverbs chapter 18, verse 13 in the Passion Translation. God says to eliminate strife and to eliminate and to deal with conflict, we got to learn to be good listeners. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 13 in the Passion Translation says this, listen before you speak, for to speak before you've heard the facts will bring humiliation. Let me say that again. Listen before you speak, for to speak before you've heard the facts will bring humiliation. Y'all know King Solomon was the richest man in the world, right? Y'all understand that, right? You know these are the letters of King Solomon. Listen before you speak, for to speak before you've heard the facts will bring humiliation. Man, this was a hard thing for me to learn. I used to always listen to respond. I used to always listen to respond. Rich people listen to gather all the facts. So now they can process that and make the best decision for them. Got to become a great listener. 
Proverbs chapter 1, verse 5 in the Amplified. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 5 in the Amplified. It says the wise will hear and increase learning. And the person of understanding will acquire skill and attain, watch this, uh, and attend to sound counsel so that he may be able to steer his course rightly. Let me say that again. The wise also will hear an increase in learning and the person of understanding will acquire skill and, a, and attend to sound counsel so they may be able to steer his course rightly. Think about that. Think about that. You ever see somebody's always talking, always talking, always talking? Normally that's a person with a problem because they're not listening. In business, folks, write this down. We must listen for the details. We must become great listeners to listen for the details. Why the details, Pastor? Because the details are the plot points in the, in, in the latitude and altitude, I mean the latitude and longitude of your success path. In the details, you're going to find the latitude and longitude of your success path. You have to listen for pain. Why? Because solving pain and fixing problems will make you rich. Solving pain. Having an answer for pain, solving problems. People don't pay people a lot of money to do a job. People pay people to solve problems. They'll pay more money to solve problems. Why do you think it is when you're in a bind, the prices go up? Why is a generator that costs $500 worth $5,000 when the hurricane goes through? Because now the generator is solving a major problem. But when it's sitting in your garage and there's no storms, it's not solving a problem. It becomes more valuable the worse the problem becomes. We got to listen for envy and jealousy. We got to listen for discrepancies and misrepresentations. We have to listen to those, watch this, who are not able to explain themselves thoroughly and adequately. We got to listen to them as well. We got to become great listeners. Listening will reveal, watch this, listening will reveal, reveal the cause of strife around you. Listening will reveal the cause of strife around you. Think about that, man. When you get rid of strife, strife is the wicked thing. Strife is the wicked thing, but you've got to understand. Conflict is good. Some of us think conflict is strife. It's not. Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 10 in the Amplified says this, drive out the scoffer and the contention will go out. Yes, strife and abuse will cease. Watch. Drive out the scoffer and contention will go out. Yes, strife and abuse will cease. You cannot get rid of strife without being a good listener and without being a person that's willing to confront. You'll never be a good leader unless you become a good confronter. To be a good confronter, you got to be a good listener. Let me say that again. To confront, yeah, you got to have some tenacity. You can't be wimpy, right? You, you got to be a big boy. You got to be willing to listen. You got to be willing to take, you know, whatever comes your way and deal with it. And to deal with it properly, you got to be a good listener. But you've got to understand conflict is what's going to draw out, drive out the strike. But you got to be a good listener. Number one, you got to remember that conflict will occur. If there's going to be success, there must be conflict. There has to be a purging in order for there to be success. Amen? Hold on, let me see this. Thank you, Jeremiah. Just text me. 
make sure I'm doing good. Oh, that was Pastor Deborah. I love that girl. All right. Number two, your reaction to conflict determines whether it is a barrier or a bridge to your future. So we got to face it. Listen to what I'm saying. Your reaction to conflict will determine whether it's a barrier or a bridge to your future. So we got to be good listeners. We got to be good listeners because if we're not listening, then we're reacting. If we're listening, we're hearing. What did the Bible just say? We hear what? Increase in learning. Stop talking so much. Listen. Listen, let me tell you something else about listening. Sometimes listening hurts. Sometimes there are things going on all around you that are talking to you. And instead of listening to the things that are going around, going on around you, talking to you, you stick your head in the sand. Oh, pastor just said that because he don't love me. Pastor said that because he don't want to see me succeed. My wife said that because she's jealous of me. My boss said that because he knows I'm better than him. Come on. If you have a boss that you feel that way about, get another job. If you have a pastor that you feel that fa- feels that way about you, ask the Lord where to go. If you have a wife that you think feels that way about you, maybe you should ask God, is that your wife? I don't know. That's insecurity within yourself. You cannot correct what you're unwilling to confront. You cannot correct what you're unwilling to confront. So strife will stay in your life. Conflict is always caused by wrong words. Always. That's how it starts. So we have to listen. Hear what's being said. Never attempt to change someone who is unwilling to change. That's something I had to learn as a pastor. And I'm starting to do a much better job of it now. I don't call after people. I don't chase after people no more. I don't text people repeatedly. Somebody got to text me. Hey, are we going to meet? Hey, what day are we going to meet? Hey, we, we talked about this a month ago. I said we need to meet. I'm not chasing after people no more. Why? Because when I have to chase you, that is the evidence you are unwilling to change. Now, I listen to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit tells me to call, I call. I don't get in private, right? Wrong people will create wrong climates. Man, if you own a business and you got someone around you that don't agree with your vision, that don't agree with how you believe, and I'm not talking about, see, another thing we do wrong in the church, oh, a pastor, but they're Christians. I don't care. Pastor, they go to a great church. I don't care. Pastor, they, they're up under uh, 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 Joe Osteen. I don't care. Where you're at in the vision God's given you, if you're the head of that business, they need to be thinking the way you think. All Christians don't think like I think. Trust me. All Christians don't believe like I believe. All churches don't teach like we teach. It's different. Why? Because every assignment in the body of Christ is different. If you have a different assignment, it requires different preparation. That's why you see these people. Why, why you think everybody wants all these Bible studies and sit around and talk times and, you know, let, let's get together and, you know, let's everybody pick a book and review a book. Man, is that book you're reviewing part of your assignment? Is the pastor that you're, it could be the word of God, but is it part of your consignment, assignment? Because if it's not, it's going to cause conflict. And strife. You got to root that stuff out. And then the last thing you got to remember is conflict always has a cure. But you got to get serious about listening. You got to get serious about addressing these things. So in closing, I just want to say this. In Proverbs 26, from 20 to 22, in the Passion Translation, it says this. It takes fuel to have a fire. A fire doesn't burn. A fire dies down when it runs out of fuel. So quarrels disappear when gossip ends and, and watch this, add fuel to the fire and the blaze goes up. So add an argumentative man to the mix and you'll keep strife alive. Gossip is so delicious and how we love it to swallow it. 
Gossip is so delicious and how we love to swallow it. For the slander, the slanderer is easily absorbed into the innermost being. So we see right here, the Bible talks about people that gossip, people that talk a lot, people that are not in line with you. You got to become a good listener to hear who around you is aligned with you, who around you is for you. Those are the people that want to see you win and want to see you victorious. So today as we give, we're going to sow a seed today. Let me tell you something. When God asked Solomon, what did he want? Do you want money? Do you want this? Do you want that? Do you want houses? What do you want? Solomon said, give me wisdom, Lord. So today we're going to sow for wisdom. We're going to sow a seed. Proverbs 1 and 5 in the Amplified. That we will become, it says, the wise also will hear and increase learning, and the person of understanding will acquire skill and attain sound counsel. So today, we're going to sow that as we hear God's word in the future, we will get wiser. We are going to sow our seed. I want everybody today to go to ltmorlando.org forward slash give. I want everybody to sow a seed. And as you sow, I want you to declare, Father God, as I sow this seed, I thank you, Lord, that you are Lord of the harvest. And I call in. This seed is for a harvest of wisdom in my life. This seed is for a harvest of being a better listener in my life. This seed is for a harvest of being a better confronter in my life. And as I become a better confronter and a better listener, Lord, strife will be driven out of my life and unity and increase will become part of my life. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for everybody that's given today. I thank you, Lord, that as they give, Father God, it's for wisdom, Father God. I thank you, Lord, wisdom and listening, wisdom and learning how to deal with conflict, Father, and drive strife out of their life, Father, so you can bring them into perfect harmony with your thinking and your wisdom. And as they become in perfect harmony with your thinking and your wisdom, Father, they become the wiser. And as they become the wiser, they become more prosperous. Direct their path, Lord. Lead their way. I declare everything they put their hands to, Father God. They will have the wisdom to prosper as a result of their seed sown today. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, if there was ever a time to sow a seed, it's today. Sow that seed as you click that give button. Say, Lord, this is for wisdom. Lord, this is for better listening. Lord, this is for greater confronting. And Lord, this is to drive the wicked thing out of my finances. Strife and division. I call forth unity in how to approach my finances in Jesus' name. That's your declaration. I love you. I love you. I love you. Until Monday, Pastor Nick saying, enjoy life. Can I come back? Hey, don't forget heart of the matter tonight. Seven o'clock. We are talking about pet peeves. Not only are we talking about pet peeves, but we are talking about if you have a pet peeve, what does it say about you? My pet peeve is I hate, I dislike, I can't stand when people are in public talking on a speakerphone. Hey, how you doing? And then that's coming. How are you? And they're sitting in the table right next to you. That's my pet peeve. But what does that pet peeve say about Pastor Nick? Maybe there's something I have to learn. It's going to be funny. We're going to have a panel. We're going to joke. We're going to laugh. We're going to take some of your pet peeves. We're going to, it's going to be interactive tonight. Tell a friend. It's going to be a great time. Seven o'clock tonight on Heart of the Matter. Until then, Pastor Nick saying, enjoy life.